tricks, strategies and templates sitting at your home. Not only the strategies, but complete scored mock test with detailed feedback. Language Academy brings to you the most comprehensive video course with a proven success rate. For more information, click the link below. Rebuilding carbon-rich agriculture soils is the only real productive, permanent solution to taking excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. She's frustrated that scientists and politicians don't see the same opportunities she sees. This year Australia will emit just over 600 million tons of carbon. We can sequester 685 million tons of carbon by increasing soil carbon by half a percent on only 2% of the farms. If we increased it on all of the farms, What is nanotechnology? Well, a report that was put together by a combination of the Royal Society and the Royal Academy of Engineering that came out last summer, identified two topics. Nanoscience is the study of phenomenon and the manipulation of materials at atomic, molecular and macromolecular scales, where properties differ significantly from those as a larger scale. Nanotechnologies are the design characterization, production and application of structures, devices and systems by controlling shape and size at the nanometer scale. So I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about what a nanometer is, but loosely speaking people think of nanotechnologies as being a sort of a hundred nanometers or less. So a virus is something that you can't see by normal light microscopy, you need very advanced techniques for electron microscopy to see it, but that virus is not able to reproduce itself without a host and us as human beings are made up of lots of different cell types and we are interested in understanding at the molecular level how that virus infects the liver and why does it infect the liver and it doesn't infect the heart or it doesn't infect other tissues. Financial markets swung wildly yesterday in frenzied trading market by further selling of equities and fears about an unraveling of the global carry trade. At the same time trading in the European credit markets in London was exceptionally heavy as traders frantically reassessed their appetite for risk prompting wild swings in the prices of the key derivatives. It was the third day of frenetic activity in the European credit markets suggesting that equity market swings were prompting a wider repositioning of investors in a host of asset classes. For many years the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lugier, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. Along the way, we have built unashamedly beautiful buildings, two of which have won and been runner-up in the prestigious United Nations World Habitat Award, the first time an Australian building has received that international honor. We rely on older concepts of Australian architecture that are heavily influenced by the bush. All residents have private verandas which allow them to socialize outdoors and also create some defensible space between their bedrooms and public areas. We use a lot of natural or soft materials and build beautiful landscaped gardens. Florence Stephen Lowry RBS Raw was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Penn Lebery, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. 
Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his city landscapes peopled with human figures often referred to as matchstick man. He painted mysterious unpopulated landscapes, brooding portraits and the unpublished, Naranet, works, which were only found after his death. Now that story's been scotched, as only part of contingency planning. But it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery, indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed, even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother. Considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray, something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? Brooke and her colleague Mark Newman studied who swapped messages with whom on a popular online dating platform in the month of January 2014. They categorized users by desirability using PageRank, one of the algorithms behind search technology. Essentially if you receive a dozen messages from desirable users, you must be more desirable than someone who receives the same number of messages from average users. Then they asked, how far, out of their league, do online daters tend to go when pursuing a partner? I think people are optimistic realists in other words, they found that both men and women tended to pursue mates just 25% more desirable than themselves. So they're being optimistic, but they're also taking into account their own relative position within this overall desirability hierarchy. And the study did have a few more lessons for people on the market. I think one of the take-home messages from this study is that women could probably afford to be more aspirational in their mate pursuit. For all his fame and celebration, William Shakespeare remains a mysterious figure with regards to personal history. There are just two primary sources for information on the Bard, his works, and various legal and church documents that have survived from Elizabethan times. Naturally, there are many gaps in this body of information, which tells us little about Shakespeare the man. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in the spinal cord called the Central Contract Patterns Generator CPG. This produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in a way that produces running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between modes such as going from a standstill to walking. Well, there's probably around about a 10% chance, up to a 10% chance of that occurring. It's really hard to crystal ball these sorts of things because we can't use the historic data we've got. Over 116 years of records on inflows into the system, we are continuing to break every record, and so it's very, very difficult to forecast going forward when you're in the midst of such an extreme event. As Joe noted, one really important point here is that we are really at the very beginning of seeing what is going on. And, what we are seeing in the credit markets is a re-pricing of risk initially, investors were pricing their investments, and the kind of deals they were asking for were ones where they had a historically low premium required for the risk that they were taking. And now, the pendulum has swung much the other way because I think that people really don't understand exactly how much risk they are taking and I'm sure that they are waiting on the sidelines to see. A nutrition expert at the university for what him unknown, say the simple sugar and candy bars can give you a quick boost. 
but after the initial rush, you usually crush it feel worse than before the snap. They say what you need is complex carbohydrates like a bagel or a bowl of nut sugar coating cereal. Try carrying a variety of pack size box to work with you and buying a small carton of milk from the vending machine. Carbohydrates help you sustain a blood sugar level that is neither too high nor too low. That means you have a steady flow of energy to finish your day. Now because you're having all these cities and all these factories people are going to move to these cities for work and you're going to have a lot of different people from different areas in one particular small geographic location. So you're going to be seeing these people interact a lot more than you would in small rural areas. Also, you're going to have housing shortages, crime, lack of jobs so there's a lot of things that you could observe and test and see. And this is what sociology really takes off as a science. It all started last spring when the Food and Drug Administration placed a black box warning on some popular anemia drugs. The labels warn against using the drugs in cancer patients with relatively mild anemia resulting from chemotherapy. The FDA says the drugs clearly shorten survival and speed the progression of cancer. In people with slightly worse anemia, the drugs might have the same effects. To Barry Straub, Medicare's chief medical officer, the message was clear. The Walt Disney Company says it plans to eliminate single-use plastic straws and stirrers in all of its locations worldwide by mid-2019. In an announcement Thursday, Disney said the step will save more than 175 million straws and 13 million stirrers used and thrown away at its theme parks, resorts and cruise lines every year. Disney joins other companies such as Starbucks in the fight to reduce plastic waste. But as Newsy has previously reported, straws make up only a tiny portion of the plastic that ends up in Earth's oceans and coastlines. The company says it also plans to reduce the number of plastic shopping bags it uses and fully eliminate polystyrene cups. Experimental psychological research is conducted in a lab under controlled conditions and attempts to rely solely on an application of research methods to understand behavior and mental processes. As an example of a psychological experiment, you might want to investigate people's perceptions of different tones. Specifically, you could ask the following question, is it easier for people to discriminate one pair of tones from another depending on their frequency? To answer this, you would want to disprove the hypothesis that all tones are easy to discriminate. Scientists filming in one of the world's deepest ocean trenches have found groups of highly sociable snailfish swarming out of their bait nearly five miles beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. This is the first time cameras have been sent to this depth. Although some species of snailfish live in the shallow water, the Haddle snailfish are found exclusively below 6,000 meters. Here they have to contend with total darkness near freezing temperatures and immense water pressure, equivalent to 1,600 elephants standing on the roof of a mini car. They feed on thousands of tiny shrimp-like creatures that scavenge the carcasses of dead fish reaching the ocean floor. Obviously, this is all relevant to your final assignment. So we're going to talk about it. So until today, we've gone through face-to-face -face interviews as the main sort of part of interviewing the window. Today we're going to have a look at going to use an email and why they work, why they don't necessarily work, and what are the challenges and some of the things that we need to be understanding, you know when we are completing such interpreters. So let's start with the foreign one. Obviously, there are a few benefits to them, and they are listed there up on that slide. It's obviously less stressful for those of you who might be a little bit anxious about interviewing. Again, I want to repeat that I don't blame libertarians for this state of affairs. My argument is really that they simply have nothing to offer us in this debate. 
When we talk about trying to get rid of the welfare policies that have enabled some of the breakdowns of the family, that is undoubtedly important but I think we're beyond that at this point, the damage is so deep. And it's kind of hard for me to envision a future without social security, for instance. I quite agree with the analysis that the social security, Medicare and that sort of thing, have decreased the primary functions of the family, but I cannot imagine a world in which we get rid of these things so that we will be from a pragmatic point of view we have to think about what we can do to try to bolster up this breakdown that I keep referring to. Now, the earth naturally removes CO2 from the air by seawater, soils, plants and even rocks. And although engineers and scientists are doing the invaluable work to accelerate these natural processes, it simply won't be enough. The good news is, we have more. Thanks to human ingenuity, we have the technology today to remove CO2 out of the air using a chemically manufactured approach. I like to think of this as a synthetic forest. There are two basic approaches to growing or building such a forest. One is using CO2 grabbing chemicals dissolved in water. Another is using solid materials with CO2 grabbing chemicals. No matter which approach you choose, they basically look the same. When you look at a lake, you are looking at a collection of molecules that have been there on average for about a decade. In the ocean the residence time is thought to be more like a hundred years. Altogether about 60% of water molecules in a rainfall are returned to the atmosphere within a day or two. Once evaporated, they spend no more than a week or so, Drury says 12 days, in the sky before falling again as rain. Evaporation is a swift process, as you can easily gauge by the fate of a puddle on a summer's day. Even something as large as the Mediterranean would dry out in a thousand years if it were not continually replenished. Social harm originates out of a series of debates within criminology about the narrowness of the definition of crime, which essentially focuses on individual acts of harm, things like interpersonal violence, theft, so on and so forth. So the idea of social harm originally was to expand that notion of harm to encompass the harms that organizations cause that nation-states cause. But laterally the idea of social harm really now transcends criminology so there are a group of writers who think that, and I would include myself there, that actually there's something to social harm that could be very useful in terms of trying to understand the harms that occur within society, to produce an objective and well-rounded analyses of harm. In that month or six weeks, the patient may feel perfectly well. He may even travel around the world spending hours packed into crowded airplanes with unsuspecting fellow passengers. That's bad enough with regular TB or with strains that are resistant to two or three mainline drugs used to treat the disease. But it's a potential public health catastrophe with the new strain called XDRTB, for extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis. The strain is impervious to a wide array of first and second line drugs. That's why 30% or more of its victims die. And that's why people like Lawrence Gustine are rethinking what public health authorities should do about people with suspected XDRTB in the weeks before the diagnosis is in. For one thing, its ancestors changed the earth in ways that made it possible for us to evolve and hidden in its genetic code is a blueprint that may inspire ways to reduce our dependency on fossil fuel. But the most amazing thing is that there are 3 billion 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 of these tiny cells on the planet, and we didn't know they existed until 35 years ago. So to tell you their story, I need to first take you way back, 4 billion years ago, when the Earth might have looked something like this. There was no life on the planet, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere. So what happened to change that planet into the one we enjoy today, teeming with life, teeming with plants and animals? The U.S. Treasury Department has imposed sanctions on a number of people and entities with connections to Syria's chemical weapons. The sanctions target five groups and eight individuals. The Treasury says they are 
key components, in a network that gets electronics for the agency developing Syria's chemical weapons. The move was in coordination with the French government, which asset renewed freezes on a number of groups and people from the same network. Syria has allegedly used chemical weapons at least 34 times since 2013, but some estimates put that number as high as 85. Well, the simple explanation might be that yesterday's sudden drop in share prices pretty much across the board has created what market analysts like to call a buying opportunity. It tends to bring out investors to pick through the ruins, looking for bargains. What seems to be happening today is this decision by investors that sellers got a little carried away with things so the buyers have lifted all the major indexes today. The Dow, the Nasdaq, the S&P 500 were all up around half a percent in early trading today, and that wasn't a big surprise. The sell-off continued somewhat overseas, but you could watch things stabilize abroad. European markets remain fairly weak, along with many of the Asian markets. But you'll remember that all this started with a big plunge of around 9% on the stock market in Shanghai. Well, Chinese stocks rebounded by around 4% and that kind of set the tone. Well, I'm absolutely delighted first of all to have been appointed to this professorship. The role is going to be about public engagement in science, it is about making science accessible to as wide an audience as possible, it's about encouraging young people to think about science as a career, it's about making it easier for our academics here at the University of Birmingham to talk about their research to the general public and it's not just about a one-way flow of information, it very much is about a dialogue. And one particular crop, almonds in the US and now in Australia, is transforming the world of beekeeping and a bees. What has happened is that something serendipitous came along that people found out, that doctors found out that almonds are good for you, they're actually a food that is normally considered a confection, but it's good for you. The almond board got a very aggressive promotion going on for almonds. I just heard recently. They send out sales reps to cardiologists at hospitals to promote the heart benefits of almonds, so they go right to the doctors to do this. So they leave no stone unturned in a very good promotion of almonds, and it's legitimate promotion because they are healthy food. So what's happened is worldwide, almond sales have taken off. Finally, another installment of our weekly brief but spectacular. The Hospitality House has been offering support to homeless and poor residents of San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood since 1967. Its executive director, Joe Wilson, has been affiliated with the organization for more than 35 years, and is uniquely qualified for the job. I have literally slept in gutters at night. I have gone to sleep at night on the street in some cases hoping that morning wouldn't come. The coldness, the starkness, the inhumanity of being on the street with nothing, without the security that four walls can bring, is a very debilitating experience. For four centuries after the Viking declined, the people of the Shetland Islands off the north coast of Scotland continued to sell their goods through the North European Hanseatic League. The Hansa merchant bought shiploads of salted fish and in return, the islanders got cash, grain, cloth, and other goods. This lasted until the Act of Union between Scotland and England in 1707. This act prohibited the Hansa merchant from trading with Scotland. Consequently, Shetland went into an economic depression. The independent farmers of Shetland had to sell their land and were then obligated to pay rent, eventually becoming serfs. In 2001, at the age of 22, 
I took a job as head of housekeeping at Vundumtiki Camp in the Okavango Delta a patchwork mosaic of channels, floodplains, lagoons and thousands upon thousands of islands to explore. Home to the largest remaining population of elephants on the planet. Rhinos are airlifted in C-130s to find sanctuary in this wilderness. Lion, leopard, hyena, wild dog, cheetah, ancient baobab trees that stand like cathedrals under the Milky Way. Here, I discovered something obvious, wilderness is our natural habitat, too. We need these last wild places to reconnect with who we really are. The question that most people want to ask at this point is, how do we speed up the transition? If it's a good idea to have fewer people in the world, which may or may not be the case, then how might we move towards a situation in which population growth rates are reduced? How might we speed up the transition, the demographic transition that I've talked about? And I think there are probably four kinds of answers. I'm not going to suggest that all the kinds of answers but those are the most obvious ones. Help us understand what entrepreneurship means to you. Is it just about starting companies? Not at all I think, for me, entrepreneurship is about transforming things by initiating, by taking new ideas, by seeing them from concept into practice so that the impact of the idea is larger than it would be, let's say if you just wrote a publication about it. So, I think it's finding creative ways to solve problems, to do new things. And I think that's what it's about. So, I think entrepreneurship can happen inside universities. I think we try to think of ourselves as an entrepreneurial university. We take risks. We try new things. And I think that's an important asset for anyone who wants to lead an organization or lead change. So it's a fantastic place to be a puffin, there are no ground predators, there's protection. On the other hand, if you're going to increase in numbers, and we increased from 5 pairs then to 2,000 pairs in 1972 when I started up to about 80,000 pairs in 2003, you've got to have a lot of food. I mean you've got to have a hell of a lot of fish however small a bird that you are. And there seems to be profound changes in the North Sea where man removed all the large fish, the large cod, the haddock and those sorts of things, for human consumption. And the numbers of small fish increased and this allowed the seabirds to increase. You've got a lot of big fish that are of no use to seabirds, they're just too big. I mean puffins will only eat fish up to about 20 centimeters long. Anything bigger than that is safe from a puffin. So every year influenza does strike. It causes seasonal flu outbreaks and that's caused by new influenza strains. It affects about 5 to 20 percent of U.S. residents, and 200,000 people become sick each year and 36,000 people die from flu. And sometimes flu viruses can actually mutate to form novel viruses. We worry about novel influenza subtypes because they can cause pandemics and a pandemic is a global outbreak of a disease. The most severe influence of pandemic in the last century occurred in 1980. And it was caused by a flu virus called H1N1. It began in the United States around September 14, and within five weeks, and it spread throughout the entire United States. It's estimated that 20 to 100 million people died worldwide from this disease that year and it included 500,000 Americans. Integrated ticketing allows a person to make a journey that involves transfers within or between different transport modes with a single ticket that is valid for the complete journey, modes being buses, trains, subways and ferries. The purpose of integrated ticketing is to encourage people to use public transport by simplifying switching between transport modes and by increasing the efficiency of the services. In most cases, integrated ticketing is made possible by electronic ticketing technologies such as magnetic stripe cards or smart cards. Some smart card systems are also used for paying for goods and other services such as the Octopus Card. 
Some public transport systems also use paper cash tickets that allow transfers within a specified area, and in some cases, such as the Transperth Family Rider, allow unlimited travel during specified times. When density is high enough our natural reaction to the closeness of all those vehicles behind us is to slow down. This reduces the flow and speed, and increases the density, which can cause even more slowness. Eventually the whole thing grinds down to a low speed. Density is increased by people joining a road from on ramps, and this causes vehicles to slow down, i.e. people are generally bad at merging at speed. Then some people who have been held up in the left-hand lane move to the middle lane which causes the same problem in the middle lane, traffic backs up. Then some people dive from the middle lane into the overtaking lane and that slows down. Now, as you know already, there will be a midterm exam next week. The exam will be an open book, open note, and open internet resource exam. But you can't use a classmate or me during the exam. Many of the questions on this exam don't have definitive answers. I wish to assess your critical thinking ability and your ability to combine ideas. A poorly organized answer will not get the same grades as a well-organized answer. Here are some good ways to study for the exam. First of all, it would be better for you to organize and review your lecture notes. That means you many need to compile notes and lab test results if you have not done that already. I strongly suggest that you write trial outlines before the exam. I think it will make you feel more comfortable. Just stop by my office. It's been a challenging decade for the music industry, with a significant decrease in sales. For years, little action was taken against illegal downloads, with few effects for downloaders. However, two new approaches are seeing positive results. Firstly, the industry's working with internet service providers to slow an illegal downloader's connection. Secondly, it's working directly with digital music websites. In Sweden three out of five illegal file sharers have cut back or stopped, with half of these people moving to legal websites supported by advertisements. We miscommunicate more commonly than we communicate accurately. Often, the words we have are at least somewhat inadequate to express how we feel. The first words we think of are often poor reflections of what we really mean. We might at times even want to take our words back for a second attempt. But once those words have left our mouths, our partners are already replying to whatever we have just said. Most conversations happen too fast to allow us to figure out what we really meant to say. People rarely translate another person's unique way of saying things with any degree of accuracy. This is because when we learn the meaning of words, we pick up their broad meaning but we've added subtle shades of difference which we get from our personal experiences. If you grew up in an aggressive household, the phrase, I'm angry with you, had different associations than for a person from a family where people talk through problems. We're left having to work out meaning from our own experience. So despite the fact that, say, Bob and Gina are both speaking English, Bob is really speaking, Bob English, and Gina is turning that into, Gina English, and the translation is never going to be perfect. We'll look now at a very interesting study. It was carried out by a researcher who words in two countries, Scotland and Italy, and it involved children from both of these countries aged around nine or so. Half of the children from each country spoke only their national language. However, the other half spoke their national language plus another language. During the study all the participants were given tests and quizzes which looked at a range of skills, including vocabulary understanding, problem solving, creative thinking and arithmetic. The children used their national language to complete the tasks, which involved things like copying patterns of colored blocks, orally repeating a series of numbers and giving clear definitions of words. The results were quite clear. 
the bilingual children were significantly more successful in the tasks. A really good illustrative example of the point I want to make is the book Journey Cake, Ho, by Ruth Sawyer, based on a traditional folk tale. Teachers often read this aloud to their classes, showing the pictures to the children as they do so. They are, of course, using the words of Ruth Sawyer, and presenting the story just as the artist has visualized it. But other teachers do it differently. Instead of reading, they tell the story from memory. This gives the children a much richer experience, they can freely use their own imaginations, visualizing the story, the characters and the scenes in their mind's eye in any way they like. And, this is much closer to the way in which folk tales were passed from generation to generation, orally, without any words or pictures to restrict the imagination. Families are always related to the economy, the politics, the culture of the society. In hurting societies young people go out when they're 10 or 12 years old and they hang out with the sheep or the goats, or whatever the herd is. That produces a kind of a, and, loose bond between the pre-adolescences and their parents. In industrial societies, we tend to keep kids in school for longer and then college is that point when they might break, or after college, depending on what they're doing. In agrarian societies families have lots of kids and put them to work. They structure themselves as large families and put them all together in one home. The main point is that families are not separate from the society. Families and the economy and the politics are all wrapped up all together. So, a lot of the research on happiness starts with the basic question, how happy are you? And we're psychologists, so tell us on a scale of 1 to 10, where 5 is average, 10 is super duper. The most common answers, interestingly enough, are high, they're 7 or 8. It turns out that most people think that they're pretty happy. This question has been asked all over the world and it turns out that there are slight differences depending on how old you are. There are slight differences depending on your place within a country, California versus New York. There are slight, subtle differences between men and women at different points. Somewhat paradoxically, although women are more vulnerable to depression than men, still, on average, women are slightly happier than men. When the time comes, its peers should follow suit. Of these, the European Central Bank faces the trickiest challenge, because it has acted as, in effect, the backstop to Eurozone bond markets, a mechanism that otherwise the currency bloc still lacks. But the main safety valve lies elsewhere, with banks and investors. Bitter experience has shown that debt-funded assets can magnify losses, causing financial crises. For this reason banks must be able to withstand any reversal of today's high asset prices and low defaults. That means raising bank capital in places where it is too low, especially the Eurozone, and not backsliding on strenuous, stress tests, as America's Treasury proposes. In the end, however, there may be no escape for investors from the low future returns and even losses that high asset prices imply. They and regulators should take a leaf out of the intelligent investor, and make sure that they have a margin of safety. Here are a couple different stories you can tell about our economy. One goes like this. Eight years after the worst economic crisis of our lifetimes, our economy has created jobs for 71 straight months. That's a new record. Unemployment has fallen below 5%. Last year, the typical household saw its income grow by about $2,800, the biggest one-year increase ever. And the uninsured rate is at an all-time low. All that is true. What's also true is that too much of our wealth is still taken by the top and that leaves too many families still working paycheck to paycheck, without a lot of breathing room. There are two things we can do about this. 
We can prey on people's worries for political gain. The effect of the first difference is, on the one hand, to refine and enlarge the public views, by passing them through the medium of a chosen body of citizens, whose wisdom may best discern the true interest of their country, and whose patriotism and love of justice will be least likely to sacrifice it to temporary or partial considerations. 